business style. I am the founder of Med School Coach, and we're the company who's obviously hosting this webinar. And with me today, I got a couple of great advisors uh, of ours with me. I got Dr. Lipset, um, who was a former adcom in at BCU. He's a med school coach advisor. He's a radiologist. He was also kind of the president of the Washington Radiology Group in DC. I'm going to give you a little bit more of an introduction to him in a little bit. Um, I also have Dr. Renee Marinelli. Uh, she also goes to Dr. Flick. She was a former ADCOM member at UC Irvine, uh, and she's one of our advisors as well. And they're kind of here to help you through uh, the process. Also with us, who you might kind of hear from in the chat every once in a while, is Laura. Laura is our amazing sales director. Um, she helps us tremendously. And so she might be answering some of your questions as we go along here. Um, you know, what we said was we really wanted to make this an interactive session. So you guys who are out there may see on your on your uh, go to webinar screen that you have a questions panel. So feel free to throw some questions at us. We're going to get to them hopefully at the end. Um, and we will hopefully have a great session here. All right. Um, so again, my name is Sahil. Um, I'm the founder of Med School Coach. Med School Coach is a company that's been sort of helping applicants through the application cycle now since 2007. So we've been going strong for about eight years now. And it's really been a fun and great process um, as we've gone through and grown and learned and helped a ton of students. And hopefully we can help all of you through this little webinar here. Um, all right, why don't we just get started. So the way I want to just kind of run things today is I want to just give you a little bit of an overview of what we're going to do here. I'm going to talk a little bit about why the med school interview is so important, give you a little bit about what you could expect on your day, talk about the logistics of the interview, um, give you my sort of top five ways um, to answer these questions, and then the really exciting part is going to be towards the end here where we got some of our advisors who are just kind of going to share with you some of their tips and tricks for the interview process, share with you some of the insights that's um, that they've seen make successful applicants at the end of the day. So let's start with a very basic question of, you know, why do medical schools even have an interview? Um, you know, lots of professional schools don't even have interviews. Med school really is one of the few that emphasizes them so much. Um, a lot of business schools, a lot of law schools out there don't have interviews as part of the process, or if they do, they're a relatively small part. But in med school, it is a huge part of the process. And I think at the end of the day, we can kind of go back to realizing that medicine is a people profession, right? I mean, you guys all wrote in your personal statement or you all will write somewhere in your personal statement that you like people and you like to take care of people. And, you know, inherent to taking care of people is being able to talk to them and have a good conversation with them and connect with them and be somebody who um, has a rapport with your patient who's sitting across from you. And as you all guys all know, you know, stats only tell a portion of the whole story. Uh, this interview is really a great way for us at, in med school admissions committees, for med schools in general, to understand who you are beyond your numbers. GPA and MCAT are great to have, but the numbers, you know, are only tell a small part of the story. And we all know, you know, this is kind of self-explanatory. The interview is extremely, extremely important. And just how important is it, you know, I want to pull out some stats, um, and these are obviously very general, but these are a lot of questions that we get a lot of times is, oh, you know, how much, how many students are going to be interviewed of the people who apply, um, of those people who are interviewed, how many are going to get in? Um, and, you know, these are, I mean, I want to give you some rough, rough ideas, you know, don't take this as um, for every single school because obviously there are differences from school to school, but a rough idea is that most schools, um, especially in the mid-range, We'll interview about 10% of their applicants. Of those 10% who are interviewed, approximately 20 to 30% of those interviewed applicants may be accepted to, to their particular medical school. And obviously, as you go up in tier of medical school, and by that, you know, I'm talking about the competitiveness level, um, they are going to interview less and less people. Um, so some of the top med schools will interview just interview less than 5% of their, their applicants. So that's not, this is obviously one of the most competitive processes in the world. I kind of just pulled out some data from about two different schools from ERAS just to give you an idea of all the verified applications. This is sort of representative of a mid-range school. 
this is representative of a uh, sorry this is representative I think of a top range school this is representative of a mid range school and you can see those numbers about ten percent at a mid range school are interviewed about five to six percent at a top range school are interviewed now you get the interview you're super excited that's the time in that you know this is this is some of the most exciting parts of your life when you get that email that says hey you're in, uh, invited for an interview so I want to just take a few minutes to just go through what your regular interview day is going to be like. You know, what is it going to be when you show up at the uh, city that you're going to? And I think this is just important to know. And obviously, every single school has slightly different logistics, right? I mean, this is not every single school, but this is how we used to do it. And this gives you just an idea of the types of things you should be expecting. So usually, there's a night before dinner, an applicant gathering of some sort. And I would recommend that if you can, you really try to go to these. Um, these are an important time for you to get to know the students, for you to get to know the other interviewers, for you to be a little bit more relaxed, but not too relaxed. That doesn't mean you throw back 30 beers uh, the night before dinner because you are being judged at that time. I can promise you that. While it might not be a formal evaluation of you, people are watching you. So you want to be on your best behavior, but you want to be a sociable person. And I think this does give you a opportunity to learn more about the school and their students. And then there's the next day, right? This is your day. This is the day where you've been waiting for. So you're going to usually check in in the morning at the admissions office, get a small little breakfast, they'll go over the agenda. Usually you'll have some kind of welcome by a dean or faculty member, and then you kind of break up, uh, start going on your interviews. And you know, most people, most schools will have two to three interviews. We'll go over a little bit more about the, um, the logistics of every different school or kind of what the uh, average school does. And most average schools, I would say, have two to three 30-minute interviews. Uh, and there's downtime between. You know, it's always great. You know, it gives you an opportunity to meet applicants who you might see again uh, along the trail. Uh, I'll give you a story. You know, I met an applicant on a med school interview um, years ago who ended up becoming my best friend at a totally different med school. Um, when we actually got to real med school. So it was kind of funny, you know, it's kind of funny to think back and think about who you meet along the process. Um, there's almost always an applicant lunch. Applicant lunch is, again, a great time to kind of sit down, get to know students, um, get to know your other interviewer ease, uh, um, get to know the school. And then usually there's some kind of campus tour. You walk around the campus. This is the time we walk around, see this facility, see the buildings. This is kind of your basic breakdown of an interview day. Now, obviously, every school is slightly different, but this is kind of what you should expect for a typical interview agenda. And so what are your goals on these days, right? What is, what is your goal on the interview day? Well, you know, I'm going to break it down into a couple of quick goals. Number one, you got to sell yourself, right? This is your opportunity to, to make yourself stand out. You want to convey your sincere interest in medicine. I think that's important. You know, really making sure that they understand why you want to go into medicine is an important part of the interview. One of the biggest things I'll always say is have a great conversation. Having a great conversation with your interviewer is you can't be beaten when it comes to their evaluation of you. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a sec. Um, be memorable. You know, you want to be somebody who's remembered. You don't want to just be another average interviewer. At the same time, you don't want to be somebody who's remembered for all the wrong reasons. So keep that in mind as well. And I think one of the things that, you know, in especially at your stage when you're kind of just getting, you're so nervous about the interview, one of the things that people often have trouble with is just taking a minute to look around at the school and understand if the school is actually a good fit for you. That's an important part of the process, right? We want to make sure that um, you like the school, you want to make sure you get all the information you need answered when making your choices. And I'll just remind everybody, you know, throw out some questions um, as we go. We'll answer them at the end, but feel free to throw out questions in the chat function as we go here, okay? Uh, in the questions function so that we can we can make sure to answer them at the end. So, you know, what I, sometimes I like to think about what makes a bad interview. And the reason I like to think about this is because I really think that you should actively be thinking about, okay, what is it that I want to avoid um, so that hopefully you can do well. And, you know, I think I, I break this up into some absolute contraindications, relative contraindications to try to avoid. When you guys actually get into med school and eventually along your residencies, 
and uh, in your careers, you know, you'll see these words used in, in medications and allergies and things like that. So absolute contraindication is things you just absolutely cannot do because that will get you rejected. And I think the first one is being arrogant. I cannot tell you how many stories I've seen of students with amazing grades, amazing GPAs, and the notation in their file is, this was an arrogant student, we are rejecting them. I can promise you that happens over and over and over and over again. And then oftentimes these are the same students who come to us and say, well, you know, I don't understand why I got rejected. I have great grades. I have a 42 on my MCAT, kind of 4.0 GPA. I went to Yale, but I got rejected. It doesn't make any sense. And it's always, almost always in that case, you've been arrogant. You've pissed somebody off on your interview. Um, along those same lines, let me just come across as being rude, impolite, or unprofessional to anyone you come across. Um, and remember, you know, you're going to be talking to the secretaries. You're going to be talking to the faculty members. You're going to be talking to the deans of med schools. But each of them makes a difference in the process. If you piss off the secretary, if you say something unprofessional to the secretary, if you get her angry, trust me, that will get back to the people who are making decisions, okay? Um, so do not do that. Make sure you be polite to every single person you meet. It's important in this process. And so just briefly, let's talk a little bit about the types of interviews and the types of interviewers that are out there, right? So there's, I would say, you know, broadly speaking, there's open file interviews, which obviously the interviewer has all the information about you in front of them, your AMCAS application. Um, then there's interviews that are blinded to grades. They have your essays, they have your letters of recommendation, but they don't have your MCAT score and they don't have your GPA. They don't want anybody to make presumptions on who you are. Uh, so instead they just give you kind of these, um, I would say, vague ideas of um, who you are as an applicant. Then you have the closed file interviews, right? Closed file interviews are basically, we know nothing about the applicant. We know absolutely nothing about them. We're just here to get to know them. And that's definitely a, that's definitely a popular interview. And it's a good way to kind of distinguish people. And I like the closed file interview a lot because it really kind of gives you an opportunity to get to know the student and not worry about any preconceptions you may have about their grades. Um, rarely, they're group interviews, right? Group interviews are basically a couple of students at once um, interviewing with the panel. A few schools do impl implement these. The basics we're going to go over and talk about them as well. And then the now popular, very popular MMI interview. Um, how many of you guys have heard about the MMI interview out there? Just a shout it out. I want to see kind of how many people even know what the MMI interview is. Um, this has become a very popular um, interview format recently and so it's very important for you for you to know about it and so we're gonna we're gonna talk about it and then who are the interviewers right um, who are the interviewers that are out there well there's the faculty right it might be an MD it might be a DO these are the people who teach you these are the doctors at the school um, they will obviously be a big part of your interview process they're also non-physician admission committee members right so these are people who have dedicated their lives to education but aren't necessarily physicians but they'll interview you as well and then there's student interviews. Uh, people who are students at a particular school will have a will have a role in each um, in some admissions committees and be able to kind of give you or interview you and give you insight into the school. So what I want to briefly do is just talk about the MMI interview. And why do I want to emphasize this? Well, it is you know it is an interview that I think is you know clearly um, clearly becoming more and more popular. So I want to just give you a very brief overview of the MMI interview before we go any further. So the MMI was developed in Canada at McMaster University. Basically, it is a, the objective is to give you different scenarios, sort of mini interview stations, atypical of your traditional interview day. So the traditional interviews, you sit across from the table from an interviewer one-on-one, -on -one, you have a 20 to 30 minute conversation about whatever may come up. Um, but in these MMI type interviews, they have a very pre-scripted question or scenario that you're going to go through. Uh, it's almost like a standardized patient um, that you will eventually go through in school. So you go through these little mini scenarios. They are just five to ten minutes each. Typically all of them are under eight minutes. You know, they're short. And what medical schools are really trying to do is, you know, they're trying to admit individuals who will not just make excellent students, but ultimately make excellent physicians, right? And what they found out through a lot of research is that the best physicians are those who basically are good communicators, especially in tough, um, in tough 
settings. And I think the MMI interview has really been validated as a really, really good way to differentiate one person from the next, more so than the traditional interview. And so a lot of schools are adopting this. I would say that almost 50% of schools have gone to this kind of interview uh, in recent years. And that's kind of something that's, you know, it was not really there about 10 years ago. And now a lot of them are going to this. So what are some of the stations you might get at an MMI interview? Well, you know, MMI interviews may combine some typical standard interview questions, okay? Um, why do you apply to the school? What obstacles have you overcome? Um, tell me about yourself. You know, these are general interview questions, but there might be those kind of questions interspersed into a scenario. Um, some of them also are tasks requiring teamwork, right? Obviously a very important part of the of the application process, teamwork, or sorry, of the medical process is teamwork. And a lot of the MMI interviews will kind of have you simulate some tasks where they have a couple of applicants working together. Um, you also have even some that have essay writing components. Uh, as scary as that might be, some may have you kind of jot down some thoughts, write a quick essay. Um, and then, you know, sometimes there's a rest station as well. We don't want you to go get overwhelmed. There's oftentimes a interaction with actors sort of station, and these stations are actors who may portray patients, right? You may have a scenario where you have to talk to a patient um, and tell them they have a diabetes diagnosis, or talk to a patient who's become unruly and has waited too long in the, in the, in the waiting room for you, and you're the kind of pretend doctor. What are you gonna do? Sometimes it has nothing to do with medicine, and the person is just an actor in sort of a real life scenario. Um, hey, you go to the movies and you meet this person for the first time, have a conversation with them. Um, you know, things like that, it's kind of putting you into different scenarios where you may feel uncomfortable at first, but really, um, really getting you to see, really trying to figure out how you interact with any given person, how you interact uh, on a daily basis, more so than the traditional interview. And, you know, at the end of the day, these MMI interviews are actually quite fun. Um, medical school applicants will often tell us that, yeah, it was actually a lot more fun than the traditional interview, uh, which is great. And so that's definitely something that you can, you can look for. It is nervous, nerve-wracking to prepare for, and we'll talk a little bit more about how you can prepare for it. I also wanted to just give you an idea of, you know, what it is that people are scoring. So this is kind of a typical MMI score sheet, right? So when an interviewer fills out your evaluation, this is kind of what they're filling out. They have a couple of different uh, performance characteristics that they're going for, and they check off each and every one of them um, as, they, as they go. Um, and so, you know, keep this in mind as you're thinking about how you're preparing and what are the things that they're going to be looking for. Obviously, this is one for pharmacy school, um, but, you know, it's a suitability for medicine if you're going to med school. Now, a couple of things, you know, what should I do before my interview is a question I get all the time. You know, what information should I know? And here is what I consider the minimum understanding you need. Um, you need an understanding of the U.S. healthcare system. I don't care who you are, you should be able to tell me the difference between Medicare and Medicaid and private and commercial payers. You should be able to understand the basics of healthcare policy, Obamacare slash the Affordable Care Act, right? We live, in a, we live in a world where this is very prevalent and a big issue, especially in our time, and you should know some of these things. You don't have to know every intricate detail, but you do need to know the basics of how our system works. I think it's too important to ignore at this point. And so how do you get those basics? Well, I always tell my applicants, New York Times, The Economist, anything written by Atul Gawande, those are great resources to kind of start the process with. Um, I'll also tell you that prospective doctor, now I don't know how many of you guys have heard or seen prospective doctor. I'm sure of you guys, a lot of you guys have seen student doctor network, uh, but not everybody may have seen prospective doctor. And prospective doctor is such an awesome website. I want to make sure that everybody kind of goes out there and, and knows about it. And I just want to bring it up for a second on my screen here. Um, it's, really a, it's really a great, great resource um, for a lot of different information. Uh, a couple of guys, Ed Chang out of UCLA and a few other guys have put together this awesome website that has so many different resources, so many different articles. Um, and this is just one, you know, 10 articles to prepare you for the medical school interview process. And they kind of list 10 that you should go, go out and read. And this, this really has a lot of great information out there on all kinds of different topics. Um, it's a lot more, I would say, kosher 
than the student doctor, which is always filled with um, a lot of crazy pre-meds who are posting on forums. This is not that. This is just a lot of great information. So I want to make sure everybody checks out Perspective Doctor. There's a lot of great um, articles on here for you to learn more about the med school process. And we obviously help them a lot. Um, we kind of uh, contribute some content and also help them um, through, through developing their site. I think they're an awesome, awesome resource. So make sure you write this down, perspectivedoctor.com. Um, as a as a place to as a place to go and get some more information. So, what what else? What question? You know, one of the things that comes up is questions to ask the interviewer. And what I always tell people is have a list of questions ready beforehand before you walk in there. Utilize the information sessions that you're going to as a way to think of new questions. So you'll be sitting in the dean's office getting um, getting some information about the school, about the programs they have. Jot down a few questions. Um, and make sure to ask questions that keep the conversation going. And one of the most important things that I think in terms of the, you know, what questions you have are, you want to ask questions that are appropriate for your interviewer, okay? And what I mean by that is, you want to probably ask different questions from somebody who's a basic science faculty member, to somebody who's a clinical faculty member, to somebody who's a dean, to somebody who's a student, to somebody who's a non-admissions, uh, non-physician on the admissions committee, okay? So you kind of have to think about all these different um, aspects of who you're interviewing with before you ask these questions. So don't ask the wrong questions to the wrong people. So, uh, and then a quick point about thank you letters. I'll just make um, so we can move on here. You know, thank you letters are good. You should be writing thank you letters. I would say email is typically okay within 48 hours or so. Um, you know, try to pick out something you remember was memorable from your interview so that you can add that in there so it's not just a very generic um, generic thank you letter. And, you know, some people ask, should I handwrite a letter? Well, I think handwriting a letter makes a difference for the right people, but you've got to gauge who that person is. Um, and, you know, that's, that's up to you. You've got to gauge who, if, who your interviewer is if you feel like they might uh, react well to a handwritten letter. So a couple of key points, and these are just my key points, and then we're going to get to our advisor roundtable uh, with Renee and Ed, and they'll be giving you a lot more. But here are just some key points that I want you to remember um, as you go through the process. So the first one is know yourself. Know your application inside and out. Uh, if you wrote down something in your application, you better know it. Um, and that includes if you wrote down a, a foreign language, um, which I've, I've heard and I've seen applicants write down that they're fluent in a foreign language, and then all of a sudden get an interviewer who speaks that language, and they can't say anything back. And that's embarrassing, and that's not what you want to be in. So if you wrote down in your application that you know a language, you better know it. Uh, know your research that you wrote down. Think about your clinical experiences. Know the patients you've seen and the doctors you've interacted with. That will help you. My key point number two, make it a conversation. And I don't think this can be overstated. Um, I always think of people who are robotic in their answers as basically people I'm going to reject. I don't like people who memorize all their answers. I don't like people who are just extremely, extremely robotic in their tone. I want to have a great conversation with you, especially on the traditional interview format. Um, you know, the best interviews may never even touch on anything medically related. I'll tell you that when I went through the process, and this was many years ago, some of my best interviews I really felt like were those where I talked about the Mets or any other sports thing that I really loved with the interviewer. And that's what I kind of emphasize with them. That's what I talk to them about because they were a big sports fan. And I know when I did interviews, if I got somebody who I wanted, I had something in common with and I talked to them for 30 minutes about something exciting that I love and they love, I always came out with a really good feeling and gave them a good evaluation. Um, keep that in mind. You know, it, it's not always about talking about every single medical thing you've ever done, but more about your life so your interest, and if you can find something that you can um, connect with the interviewer about, go with it. First impressions are extremely important, okay? Um, arrive early, don't be late, dress appropriately. These are things that you know. Having a firm handshake, uh, you know, honestly makes a difference. Um, lawyers will always tell you, I have, I have a friend who's about four foot eleven. she's a small Indian girl, and she's a lawyer, and she has the most powerful handshake I've ever seen, and I always tell her, you know, wow, this is why you've gotten what you've gotten. It really makes a difference. So, you know, give a little firm handshake. Not too firm. You don't want to break the person's hand, but you don't want to be kind of, um, you don't want to be somebody who projects a bad projection right away, I would say. Um, 
you know, things that you don't want to do, and this is this will be for your um, reference later. You know, remember your body language counts a lot. Um, don't be sloppy. Don't be slouchy. Don't put your arms in a defensive position. Don't be playing with your hair or face. These are just important things that you guys know, but I just want to emphasize again. Um, and learn about the school, right? Learning about the school will really help you on your interview process. Are there programs that you really like? Are there any projects you've noted? Are there people who are doing research at the school that you want to think about? Learn about the school beforehand. Research the school. Important to know. And then finally, logistics. You know, key point for me. You guys, when you get interviews, will be flying all across the country. Okay, you'll be going everywhere. Make sure you travel. You know, you have your travel plan sorted out. Make sure you're there arriving early. It's okay to stay with the student host the day before for sure. Just make sure you you know where it is. Make sure all these little things. I mean, this is easier in this day and age than it was even when I interviewed. Um, because now everybody's got a smartphone and people have Uber and people have um, Airbnb. <laughs> Believe it or not, when I went when I interviewed, those things weren't even there. And so having all those kind of resources and tools and utilizing them and making sure you're on time everywhere, very important. All right. So um, you know, I got through some of the points I wanted to make, and now I really want to kind of get to the really exciting parts of the application, or of our sorry, of our application, sorry, of our interview webinar tonight. And that is picking the brains of a couple of our former um, admissions committee members and now med school coach advisors, specifically Ed Lipset and Renee Marinelli. Um, again, I'm Sahil Nepa for those of you who missed the introduction. So I just want to briefly introduce Dr. Lipset. Um, so Dr. Lipset is a got his MD from Georgetown. Um, was a practicing radiologist for many years and was a former admissions committee member at VCU and now has joined our team as an advisor. Uh, he has a wealth of information on not just the medical school infer, um, medical school application process, but really medicine in general and what it is to be a practicing physician for many years um, and kind of the world we live in. And so he's going to uh, help us through understanding. And then we have uh, Dr. Marinelli, who uh, is a more recent graduate. She um, is an MD from UC Irvine. She kind of took a little bit of a circuitous route to medical school, um, but was also an admissions committee member at UC Irvine. Um, really has a lot of information on how to make yourself a great interviewer, how to really um, bring out the best. And so this is a time in the um, in the portion where of the you know, of the webinar here where I really want you guys to ask questions. Okay, we'll go through as many as we can as we go, um, but. I have a couple of specific questions picked out, but first, you know, Ed, Renee, you just want to say hi and introduce yourself if there's anything I missed. Go ahead, Ed. Ed, you might you might be muted, Dr. Lipson. I don't know if you're self muted and if you want to unmute yourself. Can you hear me? Okay, can you hear me now? <laughs> now we can hear you. Okay, great. Uh, Renee, do you want to do you want to speak first? I'm sure. Can you guys hear me? I think I can hear you, Renee. Okay. Okay. Um, thanks for having me tonight, you guys. I'm really excited to do this. It's a great turnout. Um, please type questions. I've been looking at the chat box the entire time to see what questions might come up, but feel free to type questions. Looking forward to helping you guys out. Go ahead, Ed. Okay, I'd be happy to. Um, firstly, good evening to everyone, and I'm really pleased to participate in the webinar. And as for that initial question, how important do you think the interview is? Well, obviously, I mean it, it's critical. But I, I should also state that any applicant who receives an invitation for an interview is actually to be congratulated. As you saw in some of the statistics that was presented, if you're invited for an interview, it means you're a competitive candidate who's really being seriously considered for admission. The, the committees, they don't have unlimited resources. They don't waste their time. They don't waste their resources. So it means that you've cleared a significant hurdle and, and now is your time to shine. You should look at it as, as a really exciting opportunity to distinguish yourself. So um, again, if you, if you have an invitation for an interview, from a school, you're actually to be congratulated, and, and now's the time to really excel. 
Great. Uh, Renee, can you tell us a little bit about how important you think the interview is during the uh, application process? Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I think it's a huge part of the interview process. Like Ed said, it, you guys should be so happy if you do get an interview. I remember my first interview invite, I was so extremely excited just because you you obviously kind of have made it through that big first hurdle and it's an indication that the school likes you on paper and now it's time to show them that you're a cool person in person and that you can actually be a good member of the um, student body. Um, of, you know, Sahil, you put in those statistics in the beginning. I remember in one of my interviews, and this was about five or six years ago with UCSF, you know, who's a very top medical school, very desirable to go there. They gave a quote of 50% of their students get in um, after the interview. So th it, even some schools have a much greater weight on it. So it is very important, and it is very important to make a good impression to the faculty and the students that you're talking to. Absolutely. All right, so let's ask some more questions. Uh, Dr. Lipset, what, what do you think is the biggest mistake you've seen an interviewee make during an interview with you? Is there anything that really stands out so that our applicants can avoid it? Uh, yeah, actually, I, I think so. But let me just mention a couple of uh, maybe smaller mistakes that, uh, that can be made. Uh, one is to not understand the question or the prompt, so you're not really answering the question that you're asked. Um, and, you know, a, a response that lacks focus or provides a tangential uh, response to a question or rambling. But the big mistake uh, to me is what I call the big freeze, uh, kind of the deer in the headlights uh, when you're thrown a curveball or you're really stumped by a question or an issue. And usually that results in, you know, five or ten seconds of awkward silence, which can feel like an hour. But uh, through preparation and through the use of some interview techniques, you know, that big freeze can be avoided. But that can be a very uncomfortable moment during the course of an interview. Sure. Uh, Dr. Marielli, anything you sure. come across? Yeah, I do have one in particular. Um, Dr. Lipset, I just wanted to touch on what you just said. and. That's one tip that I always give my interviewees is, you know, try to be comfortable. If you do get caught off guard and you want to take that five to ten second, like, pause, and sometimes you have to just kind of maybe say to the interviewer, you know what, let me, let me think about that for a second, and then take your five to ten second pause and actually think about it instead of just staring blankly at the interviewer and just not knowing what to say. But, yeah, that definitely happens, and something just to be aware of and try to be prepared for the unexpected. Um, the biggest mistake that I've seen an interviewee make, and this was an actual situation, is just that they became unprofessional. And this was during a student interview. Um, it was when I was a student at UC Irvine, and our um, interviews were pretty relaxed. It was outside. It was during lunch. And so we kind of just chose a comfortable spot to interview this, the applicant. And, we ended up having a really good, like, good flow conversation, which was perfect. That's how I like my interviews to go. But about halfway through the interview, the applicant obviously got a little bit too comfortable, and he actually started cursing and saying the F word and the S word. And obviously, this is a pretty extreme example. I doubt this happens that much, but it's just an example of trying to be comfortable and have a conversation, but always remaining professional throughout the entire interview. Absolutely. Good point. So what do you think, uh, and Dr. Lipsa, we can start with you again, you know, what is it that separates one student from another when it comes to an interview day? Well, one, uh, I think one thing that distinguishes a student is, uh, is just good preparation because what does good preparation lead to? It, it leads to self-confidence. And, you know, the person who's being interviewed, the applicant, of course doesn't want to come off as being cocky, but they do need to be self-assured. And one of the reasons for that is, interestingly, at least in my opinion, this may sound a little strange, but if the person who's being interviewed displays self-confidence, that actually gives the interviewer confidence. It's the confidence that the applicant will be a great addition to the medical school class. So the, in, in that situation, when you show confidence and you're well prepared, 
the interviewer is confident that you will succeed and the interviewer becomes your advocate. You need the interviewer to be able to go to that admissions committee as your advocate and present you to that committee in a very positive light. So be prepared and be self-confident. Great. Dr. Madden Allen? Definitely agree with that. Um, I think what separates the most, a uh, student the most, is just them being normal. And that meaning that they're able to interact with people very well, and they're able to have a conversation and relax, even though this is a pretty nerve-wracking day and the stakes are high. Um, I just like to see applicants that can be themselves. And obviously, there's a line that needs to go there. You don't want to be totally relaxed and let loose and be like the applicant that I just talked about. But just being somebody that can connect with other people. And as a student interviewer, it's really important to impress those student interviewers that you would be a good contribution to the student body and that you would be somebody that the students would actually want to study with and hang out with and could contribute to the whole class. Absolutely. Let me ask this question now. Uh, Dr. Lipset. You know, one of the questions we get a lot is how to answer that controversial topic, you know, uh, whether it be abortion or euthanasia or any kind of ethics question. These are questions that I think a lot of times students have trouble with and, and they get very nervous in. So what do you think, Dr. Lipson, is the best way for an interviewee to really answer questions about controversial topics well? Well, that, that's an important topic. That's, that's a, a good point that you bring up. Uh, and, you know, obviously the applicant has to be prepared. My, my suggestion or my recommendation is, um, first of all, avoid being overly dogmatic or judgmental when evaluating the question. You know, since most controversial issues are multifaceted, they're nuanced, that's why they're asking the question, you know, think in terms of shades of gray rather than black and white and demonstrate that you're familiar with the topic by stating factual bullet points or key issues pertaining to that topic. What you're doing is you're demonstrating that at the very minimum you're well informed, you understand the issue. And presenting the pros and the cons of the issue is also a good technique because you demonstrate that you're thoughtful and analytical. Now, you know, if you're pressed to take a stand on a controversial issue, well, you know, be prepared to justify your position through a logical and a fact-based thought process. If the interviewer does his or her job properly, they'll be more interested in your knowledge of the subject and your analysis than your ultimate conclusion or opinion or decision. Um, and what's also important, I think, is don't try to anticipate what you think the interviewer might want to hear. Rather, state your case back it up, and impress the interviewer with your ability to, to take a thoughtful position. And, and I think that'll be fine. You'll do well. Yeah, I would totally agree with that approach. You know, I just think I like the way Dr. Lipson said, you know, it's not black and white, right? These questions are not black and white for a reason. If they were, they weren't really, we wouldn't really be controversial topics. Um, you know, think about how you can address them in a, in sort of a diplomatic way. Um, Dr. Marielle, do you have any suggestions? Yeah, um, I really want to echo um, what Dr. Lipset said about trying to be non-judgmental and objective as possible. I've been noticing a lot about these MMI questions in particular where they ask about um, different ethical issues that, again, it's not really about the answer. It's more just about trying to find the ethical um, question at hand and really find a side for each way and just what I mean is just try to justify either way and provide po proper justification so if it's you know maybe it's talking about against abortion you know and you're you're actually against abortion but make sure you're able to talk about both sides of the ethical issue and just remain as non-judgmental objective as possible 
so you're showing, because as a physician, that's what we have to do. We get all sorts of, you know, ethical lines that are crossed and ethical boundaries that are in question. And so we have to remain objective. And that's what these interviewers are looking for, is just to make sure that you can defend your position. You can remain objective. Um, you can obviously come to some kind of conclusion and have good justification behind the, the conclusion as well. Let me ask this question to you, Dr. Lipset. You know, to really think about what is the one biggest tip, and I know it's difficult to come up with just one tip, but if there was one, what do you think is the biggest thing you would tell an applicant for their interview day? Sure. Um, well, you know, we all know the usual suggestions and recommendations, you know, the, the be punctual and dress appropriately and, uh, you know, good posture and maintain eye contact. That that we know, but what I would what I would add to that list, and I would really emphasize it, and it's ridiculously simple, but smile, and smile a lot, and try to connect with the interviewer and engage. You know, when you're smiling and you're upbeat, it's contagious. If you look like you're in pain, <laughs> the interviewer will feel your pain. So, you know, I think the goal is to make the interviewer comfortable so that you can both enjoy the unique experience. It, it shouldn't be an ordeal for the candidate or for the interviewer, so try to make it enjoyable. And just one quick anecdote. I mean, one of the greatest compliments that I heard an interviewer give uh, an applicant when uh, reporting uh, to the committee uh, the results of their interview session was, you know, the interview lasted 55 minutes I wish I had another hour. Uh, when you hear something like that, uh, you know that both parties had a good time, they connected, so be comfortable and smile. I, I can't, I'm going to echo that advice myself. Um, it's so important just to kind of be comfortable. I, I, I call it make it a conversation, you know, it's that's what makes a great interview. Um, Dr. Marinelli, you have any thoughts? <laughs> Yeah, you know, that's exactly what I was going to say, and I hate to oh, just repeat what Dr. Lips was going to say. Um, of course, there's lots of tips, but that would be my number one tips. Again, is just to be yourself and be comfortable. Um, before uh, this webinar, I was looking through some of the interview evaluation forms that I had submitted when I was back in medical school, and just from looking at a couple of them, two of the applicants that I had interviewed and I got that got accepted because I, they were classmates beneath me. Um, I wrote on there multiple times on that interview form. This person was easygoing but professional. It was a great conversation. It was they were very easy to talk to, and we had a good time. So again, that is just so important. And again, as I said before, as a student interviewer, you just want to make sure that that applicant is going to be able to fit in well with the student body and just being comfortable with yourself and just making sure that you're portraying that to the interviewer is just so important. And just to go off that as well, whoever you meet during the day, and I know you talked about this a little bit, Sahil, just if you talk to the secretary or if you talk to the dean or if you talk to some just a random person, maybe some other medical student that has nothing to do with the interview day. Just make sure that you're friendly with them and that you're comfortable with them as well. Um, just because people will remember that one applicant that really sticks out that was just so easygoing and so nice to talk to. Absolutely. I, I definitely think people will remember that. Um, I want to just open up a, a quick poll here just to see what people are thinking out there um, now that we've gone through some of this. You know, I'm going to go through the questions right now and kind of pick out some of the questions that people have asked and, and shoot, those to, shoot those to our panelists here. Um, so a lot of the questions, first of all, some of the questions we're getting are, is this going to be recorded? And we're definitely going to do our best to, to get this recorded and get it online so you can share it with your friends, so you can do it again, so you can get the insights again, so don't worry about that. Um, you know, here's an interesting question. Um, I think that a lot of people probably have 
some thoughts on uh, or some you know similar questions on would be how do you address low grades and or low MCAT score? Um, Dr. Marielli, do you have any suggestions on kind of how to address low grades when it comes to a, an applicant? Sure. Um, I think that you just need to be honest about it. If you were a freshman in college and you didn't know what path you wanted to go on and you just kind of just did it try as hard as you thought you needed to or whatnot? Um, just be honest about it and tell the interviewer. Obviously, don't say that I was just partying all the time in college and I didn't take it seriously. You don't want to say that, but you want to say, you know, I wasn't really sure about my direction at the time. And then after um, I I improved my grades once I figured out what exactly I wanted to do. So I think what you need to do is show tell them why you had those the deficiencies in your application, but make sure when you're done telling them about those deficiencies is telling them how you've improved from that. So turning this weakness of grades or a low MCAT score into a strength. So telling them that I got very serious about my courses after that and then got a 4.0 for the next two years or got an A in all my science classes. Um, so making sure that you're showing that you improved upon um, those deficiencies and those those low grades or scores. Great. Dr. Lipson, another question we have out there, and this is sort of a general question, but I think it might be relevant to a lot of people, are what are your opinion what's your opinion on jewelry, tattoos, maybe ear and nose, I should say nose rings or lip rings uh, on, on applicants? Well, you know, in, in a perfect world, uh, I think uh, interviewers or people would see other people for who they are and not necessarily for, you know, any, any uh, physical attributes or physical adornments. They would, they would discount that. Um, but, you know, we're living in a, in a real world. And, you know, you are who you are, obviously. And uh, I wouldn't go overboard in terms of trying to, you know, cover up physical traits because you think that uh, it might be held against you. But I think that, um, in, in my opinion, if there were, um, let's say, a, you know, a nose ring or something of that nature uh, that could be removed uh, prior to the interview, I think it just makes common sense to do that because, again, um, in a perfect world, interviewers would not have an inherent bias, but I think you have to play it smart, and I think I would tone down uh, any uh, physical characteristics that you think might be uh, interpreted uh, negatively. So it's a tough question, but uh, I think it's a real world answer. I would agree with that advice. And um, there's actually a lot of, I, I think, people out there who are asking a follow-up question is, what about beards? And I'll tell you, as a, as a bearded male myself, I, I, hope, nobody, uh, I hope nobody judges me. Um, but it, I do try to keep it trimmed when I, when I go for an interview. Um, I think that's a reasonable approach to take. I don't think too many people are judging you on that beard um, nowadays. So um, here's another question that's come up. Uh, this one's from Tom. So Dr. Uh, Marinelli, why don't I shoot this one at you? Um, how do you think people should handle questions about the Affordable Health Care Act uh, or Obamacare, as it's commonly known? Well, again, as you mentioned, I think it's definitely important to do some research. Um, as you said, you don't need to know every in and out of the whole um, bill and on the issue itself, but just having a general overview of it. Um, so, you know, I don't know that much about it, but I wiki, Wikipedia is Affordable Health Care Act, and there is so much info, information there. I mean, you could read it for half a day, but just taking an overview of it and getting a good sense of kind of the pros and cons of it. Um, one question that I've been posing a lot to my mock um, interviewees is, as a physician, how would you expect the Affordable Care Act to affect you? And I think that's kind of a higher level of thinking is applying this um, kind of, you know, uh, issue that seems kind of far away from them right now to how they could be in the future. And I've had a few people that kind of do that whole five, ten second deer in the headlights pause and don't know how to reply, but I've had a few people just say, you know, well, hmm, there's going to be more people in healthcare, the same number of physicians, obviously there's going to be a discrepancy there. So we're either going to have to have more physicians or 
more access to other types of care, you know, and they can extract some kind of information from it. So again, just trying to be knowledgeable about it. Um, take a stance on the Affordable Care Act. Make sure that you can either say, yes, I agree with it, and this is why, or no, I don't agree with it, and this is why, and then just be able to answer some potential follow-up questions. Try to anticipate what the interviewer may ask. Um, the good thing, the thing to remember, too, is that if you do know some kind of minute detail of the issue, so if you do, if you do mention something, you know, to kind of sound impressive that you know this much about the Affordable Care Act, be prepared for the interviewer to know more and actually follow up on that question. So if you try to sound very impressive and say something that makes you sound like you're very well versed in it, they may ask you something and then kind of almost put you in a trap because you don't know how to answer further on that. Um, Dr. Lipset, a an interesting question, and maybe you can share some of your experiences. Once you get to the interview stage, how is it, or how much does the interview count? And do people still look at your grades and your MCAT scores and your letters of recommendation once they get there? So is the application evaluated as a whole once you've done the interview, or is it really just the interview that makes all the difference in the end? Well, in my personal experience, what I found was that the presentation of an applicant was generally in two parts. Uh, one part was the uh, file review, where uh, the metrics, you know, the basic application was discussed. But I must tell you that a tremendous amount of weight was um, uh, attributed to the uh, to the report of the interviewer. So the interview is very, very important because you have to remember that in order to get to that interview stage, the candidate has already been screened. Uh, the candidate has great metrics. If if there were if there were significant deficiencies in the application, the chances are they would not have been interviewed because, as I said earlier, we all know that uh, these schools, these committees are overwhelmed with applications, limited resources, so they've already drilled down and they've got uh, an applicant pool that's highly regarded. Um, so that's almost a given that you've got a great application. You know, you've got the metrics, you've got the experiences, uh, you've got a great personal statement. Therefore, you were interviewed. And at that point, it's almost as if many of these candidates are on a level playing field. And it's when the uh, interviewer steps forward, and I used this term before, steps forward and becomes your advocate, represents you to the committee, and a positive uh, representation or recommendation from the interviewer is absolutely critical. Great. Um, so one of the questions we're getting a lot of, and this kind of segues great to what we do, is how to prepare for the interview. And you know, we can give you this webinar, and I think it's great to have that information and have all this information. Um, and that we can give you some resources. But I think one thing that makes all the difference in the world is practice. Practice, 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 practice. Practicing your interview, and not just with us, but maybe with your parents, maybe with your friends, with your, um, with your advisors at, at uh, undergrad, these things make a huge difference. Because the more you hear the questions, the types of questions, the more you can think about how you're going to answer them, the less likely you are going to be to stumble during the interview day. And so obviously one of these services that we offer, as you've been seeing throughout this sort of interview, is our interview prep. And our interview prep is probably, I think, one of the most effective things that we do. Um, basically, we have former interviewers, people like Dr. Lipset, people like myself, people like Dr. Marinelli, actually do one-on-one -on -one interviews with you. Uh, usually we do it virtually. And we give you sort of honest, real feedback about how to improve, how to become better, how to be somebody who is hopefully going to um, perform well on that interview day. And so I'll tell you, if you are out there and, you know, currently going to go through an interview in the next couple of weeks, next couple of months, I would highly recommend you do one of our interview prep um, sessions. It really helps. If you can't afford it or are looking for somebody else, you know, just look to your parents, look to your friends, do the practice. It's so important. And I just want to kind of highlight, you know, if you go to our website, which is medschoolcoach.com, 
and you click on the Hour Services button and then go to the interview preparation, you'll see a lot more information on our own interview preparation, how we go through it. Um, you'll be able to kind of buy some hours right there and actually get scheduled in right there as well, um, right after you sign up. So it's a, it's a great resource that we have. It's a great service that we have. I think it really helps a lot of applicants. Um, so one of the biggest things I'll say is practice. Practice your interviews. It's going to be really, really important. Now, I know a lot of you guys out there have a lot of other really great questions. Um, however, you know, we unfortunately can't get to all of them at all times. I really, really, really want to thank Dr. Lipset and Dr. Marinelli for being here. Um, I think they've offered some amazing advice on sort of their own perspective, their their own interview times, um, and how they approach an applicant when they when they are when they were on admissions committees. And I hope that information has been useful to you. Um, we will be recording this and we'll be sending it out. We'll also send you a follow up email. So if you have any questions, feel free to contact us. Um, Again, we offer the mock interviews, and I think it's a great service and something that we um, really do very well. So, again, I want to thank you all for kind of spending your night with us. Uh, we're wrapping up here. It's now 10.30 on the Eastern time, um, so it's, it's getting a little late, so we're going to wrap up. Um, again, I'm sorry if we didn't get to all your questions. I hope we answered a bunch of them and gave you some insight. If you have further questions, feel free to email us. Feel free to sign up for our services, and we can definitely help you. Um, and I really want to wish everybody out there good luck in the application process. The interview is definitely a daunting part of it, and it's definitely something that um, a lot of people are nervous about. But as we saw by the poll, I think a lot, a lot of people are less nervous about it just by listening to us today, and so I'm happy about that. Um, thank you again, and thank you again, especially to Dr. Lipson and Dr. Marinelli for sharing their experience. Um, and I hope you guys all have a great night. And we will hopefully get to work one-on-one -on -one with a lot of you um, at some point. Take care, everybody. Um, and again, thanks, thanks, Ed. Thanks, Renee. All right. My pleasure. Good night. My pleasure. Good night. Take care. Good night, everybody.